In this video, I'll show you how to build an SIR model for the spread of disease in a population. In the previous videos, we thought about splitting a population into groups of susceptible, infected, and removed people. We thought about the factors that influenced transitions between these groups, including the number of infected and susceptible people, the contagiousness of the disease, and the number of interactions that actually happened between people, and various factors that affected the recovery time. We looked at four quantities. T was the number of days since the first infection. S was the number of susceptible people. And since this number could vary as the number of days increased, we wrote S of T. Then I of T was the number of infected people, and R of T was the number of removed people. Then we also looked at rate equations and wrote S prime of T to represent the rate at which S of T was changing, I prime of T to represent the rate at which I of T was changing, and r prime of t to represent the rate at which r of t was changing. Now we're going to put all of this together to create a mathematical model for the entire system. We'll start by making a model for the rate of removal. For the disease we're examining, the one-legged r disease, the infection lasts three days, at which time people who are infected either recover or sail away. And in our model, we're going to make a simplification about the infected group. We'll assume that one-third of the infected group has been infected for two days, one-third has been infected for one day, and one-third was infected today. Now, this isn't necessarily true, but this simplification does something important for us. For example, let's suppose that 30 days after the start of the infection, there were 2,100 people who were infected. So this would mean that 700 people were infected on day 30. 700 people had been infected for one day, and 700 people had been infected for two days. Since the infection only lasts three days, the 700 people who had already been infected for two days are going to be removed on the next day. Another way to express this idea is that on day 30, the rate at which people are removed is equal to 700 people per day. And we can think of this a little more generally. If the infection lasts for k days, then we imagine splitting our infected group into k equal size subgroups, where one group has been infected for k days, one has been infected for k minus one days, and so on. So then if 30 days after the start of the infection, there were still 2,100 infected people, then there would be 2,100 divided by k people who had been infected for k days. So the rate at which people were transitioning between the infected group and the removed group would be 2100 divided by k people per day. And this works for other numbers of infected people. Since i of t is the number of infected people, the number of infected people in each of these groups would be i of t divided by k. And this would be true for any number of days, not just on day 30. So this gives us a rate equation for r prime of t. Next, let's think about S prime of t. To help us think about the rate at which the susceptible group becomes infected, let's imagine a simple scenario with three infected people and five susceptible people. Let's say the first infected person goes for a walk. This person could potentially infect all five of the susceptible people. And the same thing could happen with the other two infected people. In this example, each infected person could interact with and infect up to five susceptible people. If we multiply the number of susceptible people by the number of infected people, we'd get the total number of possible interactions between susceptible and infected people, which will affect the rate that we're interested in. Now, in a given day, it's not necessarily the case that each infected person will come into contact with each susceptible person. So we should consider the percent of those interactions that actually happen, which we'll call P. And it's not the case that every susceptible person who comes into contact with an infected person will necessarily become infected. So we should also consider the percent of the interactions that lead to infection, which we'll call Q. So if we put this all together, we'll get the rate at which the susceptible group changes in number. Since the size of the susceptible group is decreasing, this rate is negative, and it is measured in units of people per day. And to make things look a little simpler, it's typical to write the letter A instead of P times Q. 
and this a is called the transmission coefficient. So this gives us a rate equation for s prime of t. Now let's think about the infected population. The infected people are coming from the susceptible group. So the rate at which the infected group grows will be equal to the rate at which the susceptible group shrinks. And the infected people are moving from the infected group to the removed group. So the rate at which the infected group shrinks will be equal to the rate at which the removed group grows. And this will all be measured in units of people per day. So now we have a model for all of the rates involved. In the equation for S prime, the a represents the transmission coefficient. In the equations for i and r prime, the k is the number of days until an infected person moves into the removed group. And we're assuming that 1 over k of the infected group is removed each day. And taken together, this is called the SIR model for the spread of disease. In order to use this model to make predictions, you would need to have information about the transmission coefficient, the time it takes to recover, and an initial number of people who are in each group.